His work was taken up by many thinkers. Eyre was an atheist who saw religious language as defective and without meaning. W.V. Quine successfully questioned the positivist distinction between synthetic and analytic statements. He also found the reduction of statements that were considered meaningful to immediate experience incorrect. Karl Popper, a 20th century philosopher, stated in his book, The Logic of Scientific Discovery in 1959, that the logical positivist theory of verifiability was too strong and argued that it should be replaced with falsifiability. He maintained that scientific theories are provisional and that true scientists should always think of ways their theories could be falsified. Despite its critics, logical positivism went on to be an important influence on analytic philosophy. The logical positivists helped to explode the truth statements of religion. They were an important step on the way to secularism in the United States and England. Objectivism. Objectivism, the philosophy created by Ayn Rand in the 1950s United States, is a neo-Aristotelian virtue theory, or as Rand and her followers would maintain, a correction of Aristotle. Rand was an atheist who believed religion had begun as an attempt to answer men's needs, but had failed by positing irrational explanations and practices. Rand believed that nature was made up of entities which operate under causality and natural law. She maintained that reason was the only means of acquiring knowledge, even knowledge of values. She believed that the capacity to think must be exercised by choice. Rand thought that by exercising reason, people could build a value system based on natural laws. She believed that philosophic truths should be supported by factual evidence. Rand maintained that animals do the correct thing for survival through instinct, but humans choose through reason. A flaw in Rand's reasoning concerning the external world is apparent in her philosophy. She believes that we are conscious of the world and the world is the object of our thought. Our consciousness, she maintains, is mental, but the world is not. Therefore, the world exists. This idea is a jump. All her statement proves, as many philosophy scholars have observed, is that the world need not exist. The answer that something must have prior existence for us to think it is not cogent. People think of God, of fairies, of sea monsters, and none of these entities has any existence prior or otherwise. Rand believed that freedom and independence were the necessary terms to allow people to choose their values and then make those values the objects of their actions. She decided that freedom and independence were best served by laissez-faire capitalism. She believed that capitalism was the only correct political system. Rand's form of capitalistic government would have a constitution to protect individual freedoms, a police force to keep plunderers with lack of values in check, and a volunteer army to fend off attacks from non-objective states a government with powers to tax excessively or otherwise control people's lives had succumbed to statism, which Rand saw as socialist. Rand believed that a person might give up pleasure or work hard to help someone she loved, such as a child. The person's actions were in line with Rand's thinking that selfishness did not meet a narrow, non-giving form of life. She thought a person could only flourish through choosing a value and having the freedom to carry it through. Only then, stated Rand, could she attain success. If hindered by altruistic moral systems or government regulations, people would be neither successful or generous. Independence is valued by objectivists as people must be strong enough to resist social forces to reach their goals. Many of the great discoveries of mankind, Rand asserts, in science, technology, the arts, and other areas met resistance at first. The great people who had invented or thought of these breakthroughs had to be strong-willed and independent thinkers to stand against the disapproval, ostracism, and worse, from mediocre thinkers who did not comprehend the creator's concepts. Rand believed that the great discoveries came from free minds. 
Rand's thinking is libertarian and her philosophy had a large effect on the libertarian movement. Robert Nozick, the libertarian philosopher, has written criticisms of Ayn Rand that are very robust. Nozick, Nozick is the author of Anarchy, State, and Utopia, 1974. Rand's theory of aesthetics is outside the mainstream also. She believed artists should make concrete through their necessarily abstract works and conceptions the values that are connected to the reality in which we live. She maintained her theory held true for literature, art, architecture, and music. She thought that artists such as Victor Hugo, the great 19th century author, emphasized humans' pursuit of values and placed herself within that tradition. The Romantic Manifesto, 1971, is her statement on aesthetics. Rand has many critics, but her philosophy of objectivism has helped clarify the irrationality of religion and belief in God for many secular people who have embraced her philosophy. The Ayn Rand Institute began in 1985 and promotes objectivism. Objectivism is still very popular outside academe, but many professional philosophers continue to deny objectivism the designation of a complete philosophy. Objectivism is being taught at many universities in the present day, and Rand's novels are assigned in some literature courses. Her novels, especially The Fountainhead, 1943, and Atlas Shrugged, 1957, vehicles for her philosophy, continue to be read, made into films, and discussed by large numbers of the public. Thank you for your attention this evening.